Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service Office in San Diego. Heat and tropical moisture. Yeah, we're going to get both of them. Uh, let's take a look at what's coming our way to Southern California. Where's the moisture coming from? Uh, right now we're tracking tropical moisture. See the red where the arrow is pointed down on the Baja tip, and that's going to move into Southern California. That is also tapped into some richer tropical moisture in the Gulf of Mexico, also in red. Uh, we won't get all of this, but we'll get a portion of this in Southern California Saturday night and Sunday. What's going to bring up this moisture? The weather pattern is what drives the moisture. Uh, this time of year, the deserts are getting hot, a lot of sunshine, dry conditions. Then we get an upper level high pressure that moves over that and it gets even more stagnant. High pressure builds that upper level ridge, the dome of hot air builds, and that will pull moisture northward and that'll be the case this weekend as shown here. The arrow is how the moisture is gonna come up into Southern California. This pattern change is gonna occur now through Sunday. Big upper level ridge or heat dome, this is not a new term. Um, this is going to be the heat dome or upper ridge that's in place next week. So after the tropical moisture dissipates and moves away and uh, dries up, the upper ridge gets even stronger, uh, centered right over Arizona. So the hottest temperatures for our deserts look to be next week. Hottest temperatures for the coast and valleys this weekend. Heat risk this weekend. This is why we think the hottest days are Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, the hottest. Uh, widespread orange, moderate risk, and major risk, red. Heat risk compares to normal climatology average temperatures. All the same thing. Uh, but heat, what heat risk tells us is you are much warmer than normals. So in this case, 6 to 12 degrees warmer than average. So when you're average, is 90 that puts you up around 100 like an in inland empire we're going to see heat risk continue this is what it's going to look like later next week though it'll be more focused in the deserts uh during the entire week next week looks like the hottest days should be tuesday and wednesday now raw temperatures the actual temperatures the heat risk uses these numbers so on Saturday, we're expecting up around 106 in Lake Elsinore. That's hot, hottest of the year. That's why some of the heat risk there is in the red or major. Now for the desert areas like Borrego, 114. That's why that area is in the orange uh, and also areas of red major. We use heat risk and the temperatures that go into it to issue heat advisories that are in effect and also heat warnings, which is the higher level more impact, more threatening, more dangerous, that's also an effect for the deserts. When we get into Monday, uh, we're gonna lose most of the tropical moisture. Some of it will linger, so we'll still see some isolated thunderstorms, but uh, we are going to start heating back up in the deserts on Monday. So Sunday brings in clouds and some showers and thunderstorms, help cool things off a little bit, but all this tropical moisture will make all regions muggy over the weekend. The moisture will also produce lightning. Um, when the moisture comes in Saturday night, it's gonna be what we call elevated moisture, not just high base moisture, elevated moisture and instability. So it won't need sunshine, it won't need mountains, it won't need terrain to trigger, it won't need a sea breeze like in Florida. It can form anywhere, and that's why you see the yellow shaded has a large area of threat when that big slug of moisture comes up Saturday night and Sunday morning. We will see some rain out of it too. It won't be bone dry, uh, but it won't be heavy rain initially. Now, when we get into Sunday afternoon, see those orange areas? The mountain areas have a better threat for some heavy rain from thunderstorms. Why does San Diego have a bigger threat at this time? Overall, San Diego County is a bigger threat because the moisture is coming from south to north. So you're closer to the moisture source when it comes up Saturday night. This is uh, the threat for lightning Saturday night through Sunday night. Okay, showers and thunderstorms chances. Like I mentioned, the rain won't be heavy initially, but you'll see rain hitting the ground. 
uh, even along the coast with some of these showers and thunderstorms. Now, when we get into Sunday afternoon, we change. It becomes showers and thunderstorms that are driven from the sun, heating the earth, air rising up the mountains. Uh, so that's a different type of formation. Same moisture, same instability, but it'll be anchored into the mountains. So a shift from being this widespread moisture, clouds, and scattered showers and thunderstorms to focus Sunday afternoon in our mountain areas. And some of the rain could be locally heavy in our mountains. Let's talk about temperature. We've been seeing some unprecedented warm temperatures this spring. In fact, May broke a record, but not just for California, worldwide. These numbers are worldwide, uh, oceans and land. Hottest month on Earth, May 2024. But we just had that in April, we just had that in March. You can see back in 2020 was the next hottest month of May. We use heat risk, as mentioned, to predict how excessive the temperatures will be. Not that they'll be normal, not that they'll be hot because it's a desert, but how much will they depart from average? There's more heat stress, more impact on health, animals, vegetation, when you're warmer than average. Uh, and when you're prolonged warmer than average, a heat wave, it can be even worse. Heat risk is available on our page using temperatures compared to climatology or normal averages. The last 60 days, we've seen an increase in fires across Southern California. If we look at the past weather, not predicted, but past weather, we can see it's been dry since April. Normally we don't get a lot of rain in April, but sometimes we do. And it's been drier than average the past 60 days. But if you look at the temperatures, the coast has been plagued by a lot of cloudy days and marine layer. Some days where the sun never came out, temperatures have come out to be below normal in the green shaded. Now, when you look inland where most of these fires have occurred and fuels have rapidly dried out, yes, you can see those areas, not only have they been above average, but several degrees above average over the past two months. So warmer, much faster start in the warm conditions, warmer than normal for the mountains and deserts. The fuel has responded to this. It's dropped off rapidly. Some of the fuels in the mountains are now below average and we've peaked out, cured out a lot of the grasses and most of the grasses. The trees um, and the live fuels are starting to feel this as well as they've rapidly slowed down. Now the dead fuels you can see here have dried out rapidly and in some areas below average now inland due to all those warm conditions. Will the warming end? Will we be back to normal or average? Well, looks like late June, the edge of the heat dome will still be affecting Southern California and the desert Southwest. Hey, but it looks like some active wet monsoon conditions. Uh, as we get this initial surge of moisture, a lot of that moisture hangs around in Arizona, New Mexico, as shown here. This is for late June. Now for early to mid-June, we're looking at uh, heat building across the Great Basin and extending into Southern California. But notice two areas of above average, most of the United States, including the East Coast. Uh, monsoon appears that it'll stay confined uh, to the Southwest Arizona and New Mexico. Note the Pacific Northwest, Northern Rockies, drier than usual. So the jet stream will be pushed well to the North. And that's why that area will be so hot. What about for the whole month of July? Similar flavor, dry conditions, Northern Rockies, Pacific Northwest, below average. They still get precipitation this time of year up there. Heat, uh, two areas of concern, the Rockies, Great Basin into Southern California, also weaker than average monsoon, so drier than normal conditions in July overall, uh, with the wet conditions staying around the Gulf Coast. Look at the Northeast. Um, They've already had hot weather and that's expected to continue in July. If we look for July through September, the rest of our core summer months, below average monsoon and warmer than average conditions in the Southwest and also in the East and Gulf of Mexico. Notice the epicenter of the heat or above average, the most likely above average is the Colorado Basin and the Southwest. This latest forecast was issued on June 20th. 
A reminder, if we issue any advisories or warnings for rain and the current ones out for heat, you can go to weather.gov and get that detailed information on our webpage. Whether it be for flooding, whether it be for heat or wind, um, this information is available in detailed format as shown here. And if you'd like to take a look at some of the real-time weather alerts, the advisories, the warnings, go to weather.gov forward slash GIS and you can plot those on a map across your area or your region. Also a reminder that waterweather.gov has now become water NOAA, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. Here is where you can monitor stream gauges and estimated rainfall. So for example, when we get monsoon thunderstorms Sunday afternoon, you can zoom up in Southern California and see the uh, rainfall plotted on a map. And also if it happens to affect any streams with gauges, that'll show up as well. A tool to be uh, at your side for the upcoming summer and monsoon. Here's an example when I plotted precipitation over the past year or the water year. You can see the LA basin end up being one and a half to two times wetter than normal, so almost two years in one. The rest of central Southern California, not so wet. Uh, most areas in the Southwest were about 100 to 140% of normal. Confined to the coast, our inland areas didn't benefit as much, not because they're in the desert, but they were below average, uh, as you see in the yellow and brown shaded there. So not everyone had a wet water year. And in fact, the water year was less than the year prior. And here's exactly what I was explaining in the prior slide. Despite a strong El Nino, you can see Southern California overall ended up to be not as wet as last year. So last year, over the area, we averaged 31 inches, this year 22 inches. Still above average, but nowhere near a lot of the wettest years on record for Southern California, uh, as shown here, and considerably less than even last year. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Stay cool uh, in the heat wave and muggy conditions.